everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another one of our Animal Career Day interviews. I'm Keeper Kylie here with the Lion Habitat Ranch. And I'm so glad you guys are joining us once again for another one of our weekly specials. Uh, this week is going to be really interesting and this is going to dive into a little bit different aspects of animal career fields. So I'm really excited about this one and I think you guys are going to get a lot of important information out of this uh, that might not even be on your radar if you do want to work with animals. So this is a really great way to go and do that. Before we jump into that though, guys, thank you so much. Your outpouring of love has just continued to amaze me so much. I am getting to meet you guys in person, which has been amazing now that we're open and we're going to continue that. Again, with things changing so fast, just make sure that you're still following our guidelines. Check on Facebook page, check on our website, and just give us a call if you do have any questions. We have to be a little bit different than our state guidelines because we do have animals that we do have to go and keep safe. So if you have any questions about that, just make sure you're keeping up with us. We are always happy to answer those questions for you. And of course, if you can't come visit us, we totally understand. That's why we're going to be continuing these virtual and online programs for you guys. We're just going to ask that if you guys do um, have the ability to, if you guys can make small donations, that is a huge, huge help for us. Um, your donations have been absolutely monumental and helping us keep moving forward. So while we are open, we are selling tickets. Guys, donations are a great way that you can still support us even if you can't come and visit us. We do hope to see you soon, but we totally understand. And if you can't donate right now, that's fine guys. Share. By sharing our videos, by sharing out there, you're able to go and get more people who might be able to help right now so we know that you guys have been absolutely fantastic we know you love us we love you too so much and we can't wait to see you again soon all right let's jump into this guys i am so excited you may have noticed that i usually get excited about my interviews anyways but you know let's just move on all right so my guest for today why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and what you do Yep, so my name is Chelsea Goss. I am the Assistant Director and the Volunteer Coordinator at the Florida Wildlife Hospital, which is a rehabilitation hospital for wild native Florida wildlife and any migratory birds that pass through our area here in the state of Florida. So we're on the east coast of Florida. We're located in Melbourne. Wow, that's probably a really busy job. It's probably very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Why are you kind of interested in sharing your experience with kids today? So for me, I actually started out in the zoo field. Um, so like a lot of people, everybody sees the glamour of the zoo field and what it can do and what, you know, all the amazing things that the zoo world can do. But then things took a little bit of a change and I ended up here at the wildlife hospital and it's been absolutely incredible. I still get to share my passion for wildlife just in a different context. I'm actually getting to help wildlife in a different way and more direct way right now and still share my passion with others, with the volunteers, with the staff here, um, as well as the guests who bring us animals. And it's fun educating the public as to how to properly interact with wildlife, when it's appropriate to interact with wildlife, um, and when to get them help if they need it. That is a really, really great point. And I do like that you're still coming from the zoo world because I don't think that people see us as being one and the same. Um, but usually we end up having a pretty close connection with our wildlife rehabbers, guys, because we do care about wildlife. Ours tends to be a little bit more exotic, but our backyard animals need so much, almost more care because they are so under the radar a lot of the times. So um, I was excited to bring on a rehabber because I know some of you guys out there have asked about this too. So I know that you guys are interested in what it takes to really work with this. So I think this is going to be a really fun interview. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, so here. yeah, um, did you grow up in Florida or did you end up moving there? So I did grow up here. I actually grew up in Florida. I've lived here almost all my life. I did move away and worked at the Virginia Zoo for about four years um, and then really missed my family, wanted to come back to the area. I love Florida. I love being really close to the beaches and everything else. So it's it's kind of nice being back home and kind of getting to help out in a different way. So I started at Brevard Zoo, went to Virginia Zoo and came back to, to this area, which has been great. Awesome. And it probably gives you a really good, um, you know, emotional connection to those animals that you're seeing. You know, you, you grew up with them, seeing them as a child, and now right. you're able to go and help them. Yes, exactly. So, you know, these are all the animals that I've seen growing up and know all about, and now I get to help them in a very unique way in different way and even see animals that I didn't necessarily know were even native to this area. Um, it's very interesting when we get animals in that I was like, oh, 
I didn't even know we had that here, or I didn't know that was a migratory bird that passed through here. Um, so it's actually been a very eye-opening experience as well. That is so cool. And yeah, there's probably a lot of birds, especially. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm sure that's something that you guys get to go and see on a regular basis. Are You're seeing all types. You're seeing reptiles and mammals and birds. Correct. Yeah, there's only a handful of animals that we don't treat at our facility. So we don't do um, venomous snakes. Uh, we don't have anybody licensed for venomous animals here. Um, we stay away from the marine mammals. We let SeaWorld and the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission deal with all of those guys. So manatees and dolphins, we don't take in. Um, we don't do alligators here at our facility either. Um, that's all done by the state as well. Um, and sea turtles uh, is another one that actually our local zoo has a sea turtle healing center. So we let them take care of all of those as well. Awesome. So it's definitely a, a field that is very connected. You guys are all working together. You have your specialities, but you're able to go and all come together too. Correct. Yeah, we actually have a partnership with our local zoo, with Burbard Zoo, where their veterinary team will come over. We don't necessarily have a veterinarian on site. To be a wildlife rehabilitation hospital, you have to have a licensed rehabilitator, but not necessarily a veterinarian on staff. Um, so we actually partner with the Brevard Zoo's veterinary team, and they'll come over and assist us with complex cases, any in-depth surgeries that we might need to do. Um, so we work very, very closely with them, which is wonderful. Um, we do have a licensed rehabilitator on our staff full-time, as well as a full-time veterinary technician, um, and about uh, 12 other staff members that help out on a regular basis. Awesome. So yeah, probably a lot of work. So let's go into that. Um, what are some of the education and certifications? So if a kid comes up to you and says, hey, I think I want to help out with wildlife, where do they need to start? What kind of education should they focus on? Um, what kind of certifications do they need to work on? And then also just kind of what are some general skills like organizational skills or uh, maybe, I don't know if you guys ever have to do writing skills or anything like that. Yep. Um, so most everybody here at the facility does have a background in biology. Um, we all either have a zoology background or a general biology background. Some people have marine mammal background or marine science. Um, any of those fields are very, very good fields of study to go into in college to get where you want to be. Um, I also highly recommend volunteering at local facilities that are in your area or near your college that you attend. So that way you can get your feet in the door, you can get your um, hands dirty and kind of see what you're going to be delving into. Um, because it's definitely not a field that's made for everybody. So maybe a different animal path would be more suited to your liking. Um, but you definitely want to get some hands-on experience, see how it goes for you. Um, after school, I volunteered at a lot of facilities before I was hired anywhere. Um, and then coming into here, I always recommend my volunteers to ask as many questions as they can. Um, to be a licensed rehabilitator in this state, you do have to shadow under another rehabilitator for so many hours. I think it's close to a thousand or two thousand hours. Um, and then you do have to take a state certification exam uh, to prove that you would have the capabilities to care for the wildlife that you're wanting to care for. Um, and then in addition to that, we also have to have permits through the state and the federal government to treat and release and rehab um, all the migratory birds that are protected under the Federal Migratory Bird Act. Um, so we do have to have special permits for them. We have animal ambassadors that are permanent residents at our facility that we use for educational programs. Um, we do have to have special permitting for them as well as staff that has a background in training raptors if that's what they're going to be working with. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of laws that we have to follow. You know, we can't just take in everything that we want we do have to follow the state's guidelines. So always knowing your laws and things like that is really helpful. Um, I'd say from a staff perspective, time management is the biggest and most important thing to study. Um, try and get really, really good at that. The more you can organize your time, the more animals you're gonna be able to help, the better you're gonna be able to keep your facility, um, keep it nice and clean and up and running really well. Um, and you know, manage your volunteers and your staff because you really wanna make sure that it's a nice, easygoing, flowing machine that keeps going day in and day out. Awesome. So 
Yeah, this one, guys, I really was excited to get into because this one is is way beyond anything we've talked about so far. For all of our other career fields, we've talked about that you're probably going to need some college experience, but this one actually needs licensing for this. Um, so it, it goes beyond that, and it's going to be different per state. Mm -hmm. And even if you guys are looking to go and maybe work outside of the U.S., there's still laws and regulations. So it's really important that if this is something that you want to do, kudos we are absolutely willing to help with that yeah. so if you are feeling overwhelmed right now take a deep breath you absolutely can do this i promise you guys um, but reach out get some help kind of figure out where you want to go uh, because it is really important we're talking about a lot of different things and already i think we've talked about three different laws that i can think of um, we talked about the Endangered Species Act because you guys didn't realize it, but if there's any endangered animals coming in, um, those guys are going to have to be protected a little bit differently and worked with a little bit differently. So um, alligators, sea turtles, anything like yeah. that can For be there. Um, gopher tortoises are a big one here in the state of Florida. That's so another one, yeah. They're a keystone species, meaning that they you know, play a very, very vital role in our ecosystem here in the state. Um, and those guys have very, very strict regulations as to where we can release them back, who we would need to contact if they're in a rehab setting for more than six months, we actually have to contact somebody as well. Okay, so yep, so that's one. Uh, the Migratory Bird Act uh, is another big one because we don't want to go and impede on those animals. If they're coming through, they might just have that one little stop on their journey. And so if they have to be rehabbed there because they're sick, that might go and throw things off time-wise too. So that's something where you have to learn a lot about different species that might not be in your area. And it's really important to go and take care of them. So that's another one. Um, marine mammal species is a third third one too. These guys have their own different ones. So that's why you really have to be um, licensed to take care of those animals because that's a different one. So that's why um, when manatees and those animals are injured coming in, they need really, really specialized care. So that's why you usually see SeaWorld and uh, some of the other kind of big names there because they're certified in that and they already have the trained staff. So let's so. go through what a day in the life looks like. I'm assuming it's not just going and scooping up baby bunnies all day long. <laughs> no, no, it's definitely, definitely not that. Um, the way our facility runs, um, we run on a lot of volunteers um, and usually about four or five staff are on site at any given time. Um, we accept patients 24 hours a day um, when our physical front office is not open. Um, we do have drop-off enclosures right outside of our front gate where people can drop animals off to us at any point in time if they find them. Um, we do heavily rely on the public to bring us injured animals. That's where a lot of our animals come in. So we get we have some volunteers and staff who are manning our phones. Um, so we do have a phone hotline. So we're answering calls all day long on, hey, I found this baby bird. What needs to happen? You know, do I need to bring it to you? Is it okay to stay out? Um, so then when animals do come into us, you know, we take them in, we triage them, which means that we want to make sure that we are helping the ones that need help first and letting the ones that can probably calm down for a little while stay in our uh, intake area. Let them calm down. We don't want to ever intake an animal that's highly stressed. Um, it's not going to give us proper readings on them. We want to make sure that we're getting a full picture of what's going on with them. We also don't want to have an animal crash on the table on us. Unlike us going to the doctor or the hospital knowing we're injured and they're going to help us, animals don't know that. To them, they've just been picked up by somebody, they've been driven in a car, they probably heard the radio for the first time. Um, they have no idea what's going on and we can't just tell them, hey, I'm trying to help you, it's okay. Um, so we have to keep everything as quiet as we can. Um, we use sound machines, so white noise machines in all of our rooms to help try and keep the noise levels down and keep them nice and calm. Um, we'll let them sit in intake for a little bit as long as they're not critical, let them calm down in there, and then we'll go ahead and do full examinations on them head to toe. So just because somebody brings us a baby bird that says, oh, their wing is injured, we're going to look at it from everything from the tip of its beak all the way to its tiniest little toes to make sure that nothing else is going on that we're going to need to treat while it's with us. Um, at that point, we'll move the animal either to our nursery room if it's a baby animal. So right now we're seeing lots of baby birds come in. It's baby bird season here. Um, so we have a nursery full of baby birds. We're also seeing baby possums come in. So we have a lot of those guys, baby bunnies, um, are kind of year round, but we're seeing a lot of them right now. Um, or if it's an adult animal, so it's an adult mammal, so a large possum or a large rabbit, um, or even sometimes otters, bobcats, whatever it may be. 
um, large seabirds, so pelicans, great blue herons, all those big guys, um, they're all going to have their own special space here at the hospital. So we'll move them to the correct rooms that they need to go to and we'll provide care for as long as we need to. Um, so if it's an injury, we will go ahead and heal that injury. If they're sick, we will go ahead and treat their symptoms to try and help them. Um, and if they're babies, we'll go ahead and raise them up and try and teach them along the way everything that they're going to need to know to be able to be released. At that point, we have outdoor enclosures that we will put all of our animals out into to make sure that they can reacclimate to the Florida weather. If you've never been to Florida, it's hot a lot of the time. Um, it also rains a lot. So instead of being in a nice air conditioned building that's 78 degrees all the time with no rain, no thunder, no nothing, um, we do put animals back outside and we wanna make sure that they're reacclimated before they are ready to go. And say an animal comes in with an injury that they lose muscle mass because they're cooped up inside while they heal. We wanna put them back outside and make sure they regain all of their muscle so that way they're able to fly, they're able to hunt, whatever they might need to do. Um, some animals that have to hunt live prey, we will teach them how to do that outside as well. So we'll start off very easy by just giving them some live food and then we'll hide it and we'll put it in things and they actually have to work for it to make sure that they're able to eat before they can be released. Um, and at that point, they stay outside for a few weeks and then we're ready to send them off back to where they came from. That sounds like a pretty busy schedule. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, normally our facility treats about 5,000 patients a year. Um, so last year we saw just over 5,500 patients. Um, this year we're already at over 3,000. Oh my goodness, guys, that is a lot. Um, and that shows you this, this is another one of those career fields where you're going to be working quite a bit. I don't think there's much downtime uh, for this one. And it's probably a lot of work. And yep. that's something where you should probably know that going in. You're probably doing a lot of walking. You're probably doing a lot of physical up and yes. down. I think the only time that our staff really sits is lunchtime. Um, and if they're sitting to do records, and that's about it. Um, otherwise, they are up and running around. Our baby birds that come in have to be fed every 15 minutes for several hours during the day. Um, because we try to get their feedings into a certain amount of times. So we're not having to feed them overnight, um, which helps out our staff quite a bit. We do try and get most of our feedings in during the day for all of our animals, but we are constantly feeding. So those guys, like I said, baby birds are every 15 minutes. Um, squirrels, as they get older, could be every two to three hours. Um, and then we space out the feedings a lot longer as, we cont as they continue to grow. Um, animals that need medications, we try and give those you know, on a nice regular schedule as well. So that way they're getting the maximum benefit of those medications. Um, so yeah, it's constant. It's constantly cleaning cages. Animals don't clean up after themselves. They just don't. So when you've got, you know, 50 birds in your nursery, they're going to make a mess and you're going to clean that all throughout the day. Exactly. Exactly. Um, this is, this is something where I am, I am learning so much of this. This is really great. It's a good learning opportunity for me. Um, we, we think about these animals. We think about all the, the basics, you, you don't think about the little daily stuff, you think about an animal coming in, you know it's gonna take some time to go and work through that, but all of those little intricacies of the records, of making sure they're getting those medication, it's not just letting the animal kind of heal on its own, although that's definitely a good thing too, yeah. it's, it's always the checking up. So there's a lot of daily stuff that goes into every, every single animal. Oh yeah, yeah, every single one is different that comes into our facility. And you know, by keeping good records, when we get something in a year or two later that was similar to another case, we can actually go back in our records if we've kept detailed records and see, okay, well, what did we do for this guy? And what can we try to help this one with? Which is really helpful for us. Very, very important, yes. So this is, this is another one of those careers, guys, where it's going to be a lot more work than you. This is not playing with animals all day long. <laughs> no, 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 no. So for rehab, it's actually very different than the zookeeping field, which is something that I had to kind of struggle with when I first started here was, you know, in the zoo world, your animals, you can talk to them, you do work with them, you train them. Um, but in the rehab setting, it's very hands-off. We don't talk to our patients here. We don't interact with the animals. We just basically pick them up, feed them, put them back, or pick them up, change their bandages, give them medications, and put them back. Um, we try not to talk when we're around any of our animals. We wanna make sure that we're keeping the building as quiet as possible because we don't want these animals, especially the babies, to get used to people. We don't want them habituating to people. 
Um, we want to make sure that they stay wild and that they aren't going to go out into the wild and be drawn towards humans for that care that they, they are getting here. So we want to make sure that we're raising them up or, or treating them in a way that they don't get used to us. The more they hate us, the better. All right. Hardest question. Okay. Everyone out. Yep. What's your favorite animal? You do have either a favorite that came in or a favorite species. Okay. So I, I kind of thought about this question a little bit. So I'll have to say that my favorite animal to work with when they come into the hospital are the raptors. I have a background in working with the large birds of prey. So the hawks and the owls and the eagles and the falcons. I am just fascinated by those guys. I think they are incredible and the sheer power that they have and the intelligence that they have. Um, but I have to say, I also love the baby possums that come in because they're just so cute. And I think possums are one of the most misunderstood animals on our planet. Um, so, you know, even though they don't live to be very old, I think two to three is their average lifespan in the wild. Um, they play such a vital role keeping down our bug populations and ticks and ants and things like that. So it's really important to have possums. They don't carry many diseases. They're just, they're just wonderful little animals that are very misunderstood. Um, but going back to my zoo days, my, my favorite animal of all has to be rhinos. I, I worked with rhinoceros and I absolutely loved working with rhinos. Oh, so there's so kind of both sides of it. Yes. So, so guys, and that's just, shows it's okay to love those big species. You guys know I love my giraffes so much, but, um, you know, you always have those, those little ones. Actually, I ended up working with a rehabbed roadrunner who absolutely stole my heart. I love them so much. And so those little things can, can really go. And it's, and it's fun to, to know that there's both sides. Everybody loves the big charismatic megafauna is what they're called. Um, but it's those little ones doing it like that. Exactly. <laughs> So what is something about your job that no one would expect? Um, for us, the biggest and hardest one, and it actually kind of answers that question too, is that you can't fix everything that comes through the door. Unfortunately, with wildlife, if you're able to catch them, a lot of times, if, unless it's something very young, something is very, very wrong. Wildlife in its natural state will try to get away from people. If, they're try, if you try to catch them. So unfortunately, you know, we can't fix everything that comes through our doors, which is a very, very hard part of the job. And it's something that we have to, you know, think about every single day and make what's going to be the best decision for each animal. Um, you know, we can't take in everything. We can't take in those invasive species that come in. Um, the state, like we said earlier, regulates what we can and cannot do. So we cannot release na non-native Florida wildlife. We can't release you know, the uh, iguanas that we're seeing starting to pop up more and more here in the state. Um, but there's also some animals that are very prevalent. Um, you know, the Eurasian collared doves are almost as prevalent as our morning doves that we have here. So we have to be very, very cautious on what we can take in. We have to explain to the public. Um, you do have to be able to interact with people in this job as well, because that's what you're doing with help with people bring you animals. And a lot of times you have to explain to them, you know, what may be a very difficult decision for you to make for what's going to be the best interest of that animal. Um, but why, you know, this is the better decision for it or why we cannot take in non-natives. Everybody hears the word wildlife and they just think everything, everything is possible, you know, possible pigeons. They're not a native species here in Florida, but they're very prevalent on our beaches because people feed them. So, you know, that's probably a very difficult part of our job, but at the same time on the other side of it, I didn't ever understand exactly how much joy and pride I would feel getting to do releases. Um, even if it's just baby squirrels or two months ago, I got to release a bald eagle back into the wild that I had actually gone out to rescue. And, you know, it's just kind of one of those things where you know that you've worked hard and you've put in the work and you get to do that release at the end of the day and it just makes it all worth it. And that's a really good point. We were talking earlier about how hard it is to, to care for the animals because you are trying to go and maintain that distance. But I'm sure that, that pride when you go and you see those animals not look back yeah. when they're out there, oh, that's, yeah. that's what you're there for. Oh, yeah, so exactly. Um, one of the cool stories that we had is we actually had a screech owl. So a little tiny screech owl came into us um, at the end of one year, it was two years ago. Um, and he had accidentally been covered in foam insulation. So the stuff that they put inside houses and between the walls, 
Um, he must have been hanging out in the wrong spot at the wrong time. Um, somebody tried to rehab them themselves at home that didn't have a license, um, which did not end well. Um, so he came into us, he had eye problems, he had weight problems, he, all of his feathers were completely trashed. So none of his feathers were of quality that he could be able to fly. Um, he was with us for almost one entire year while we had to wait for every single feather on that bird to grow back in. And when it came time for his release, we all went outside and 11 months of work was gone in a matter of five seconds. <laughs> so it was like, okay, well, that was fun. <laughs> so, but it made it worth it. You know, it's, it's one of those things where we know we helped contribute to the population and help that guy have the best life that he possibly could. Oh, that's a great story. I love that so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Cause yeah, it's so much work gone in seconds and you're like, it was worth it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is a common misconception about your job? So the biggest misconception, and I get this from a lot of people who start wanting to volunteer here is that we get to play with cute and cuddly animals all day long. Um, and like we've already said, that's definitely not the case here. You know, we are as hands off as we possibly can be. We tell it to all of our volunteers as soon as they start and say, you know, if this is what you're looking for, this may not be the right fit for you. Um, but if you want to help wildlife and get it back to its natural state and back out into the wild, then we are the place for you. Um, but we don't, you know, sit and cuddle animals. We don't name any of our animals that come through here. Um, the only ones that have names are our ambassador animals that live with us permanently. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a misconception. You know, everybody finds this cute little baby bunny in their yard and they bring it to us and like, oh, this is wonderful. I had so much fun with little Fluffy and I can't wait to come help you. Um, but it's not necessarily the case. We, we are much more hands off than people really expect, but we're still doing important work. So very much so, very much so. And I'm sure it's, you're probably not getting less busy. No, 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 no. Especially since everybody's been quarantined at home. It's amazing how many things people find in their yards now. Um, you know, everybody's at home looking for things to do and all of a sudden they see the baby bird out by the tree, which probably should be there. It's, you know, a fledgling. It's jumped out of its nest. It's just on the ground for a few days waiting to fly. Mom and dad are still coming down to feed it, but people see it and they're like, oh my goodness, it must be by itself. It must be hurt. It must be orphaned. I must take it. Um, and then we try to explain to them, no, no, this is normal for them. Just step back, watch and see if mom and dad come back and you'll be amazed. A lot of times they do. Yes. On that note, guys, observation is key. We talk about this in a lot of other jobs. This is a really good opportunity for you to watch what is going on in the world around you and don't touch. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really important. We want to help. And kudos to you guys for wanting to go and have that, that kind of empathy to the world around you. I love it. I appreciate it. But give it some time and you'll probably see a lot of nuances. We also got a lot of, uh, at my old facility, we got a lot of baby deer. Uh, baby deer was another one. Um, moms leave their babies when they go out foraging. So oftentimes fawns will be um, hidden in the brush and they yeah. can actually be there for a couple hours sometimes. So yeah. it's totally normal. Rabbits um, are the same way. Yeah. Rabbit, baby rabbits, moms will just kind of dig a very, very small, shallow nest and maybe cover the babies with grass if they're smart and, you know, really looking out for them. Um, but the mom rabbits are only going to come around to that nest once, maybe twice a day. And that's usually going to be dawn and dusk. They don't want to attract predators to their babies. So by staying away, it's keeping those guys kind of hidden from, from predators out in the wild. Yep. So, um, yeah, I love, oftentimes the wildlife is better if you are concerned, and we're going to talk about this thing too, but I'm going to mention it now. If you're concerned, give somebody a call. Don't yep. try and interfere first. This is what these guys do. She said earlier, they have phone lines for you guys. They would much rather you guys have a phone call than having to go and, and bring them um, things that maybe could have been fixed pretty easily. Yep, exactly. We don't want to have to have you drive all the way back home with the baby, put it back, because that's several hours that you've just spent that that baby could have been with its parents or been fed by its parents. It's always best to leave an animal with a mom. Oh, a big misconception that everybody gets, that we get this a lot, is that I touch the baby so the mom's not gonna come back. That's a complete false, I don't know where that, that line came from, 
probably just to keep everybody from touching the babies. But if you happen to touch it, say you're, you know, mowing the yard, you find the nest before you get to it, you want to move it real quick, mow the yard, put it back, mom's going to come back. Mothers want their babies. They want to stay with those babies. So if you touch it, it's not the end of the world. Just put it right back where you found it and mom will come back for it. Excellent, excellent point. Definitely. Um, what is your favorite part of your job? So my favorite part of the job would have to, I love the releases. I mean, I love when we have that good story and we get to take those animals back out and put them right back where they came from or release them into the wild to help populate their species. Um, but I also love sharing my knowledge and what I'm learning on this job and my passion for animals with the volunteers that we have here. They're all wonderful as well as the staff. I've never seen a harder working staff than I have here. Um, everybody is so genuine and wants to help in so many ways that they can. Um, and getting to talk to the public and educating them, it's always fun getting to tell people, you know, exactly when to interact with wildlife, when it's safe to, when it's not. Um, and you see them learning, which is exciting to me because then you hope that they're going to tell their friends and they're going to tell their friends and it's going to pass on and on and on so that hopefully everybody knows what to do when it comes to the wildlife that's in our area. I love that so much. And again, guys, we all, we all love the big guys, but loving the small guys is pretty important too. I promise. And, and they'll definitely play a part. And the more you take the time to sit and notice some of the stuff going on, the more you're absolutely going to fall in love with it too. Mm -hmm. What's the hardest part of your job? The hardest part of the job is definitely the loss. Um, you see animals come in that you just know that you can't do anything for. And that's really hard. Um, you know, the only thing that we can humanely do is humanely euthanize them. And it's probably going to be for the best because they're suffering. We don't want any animal to suffer that comes through our doors. We always want to provide the most compassionate care for them, the highest quality of care. But sometimes that may be a tough decision to make. Um, so you always want to take yourself out of the equation and your emotions out of the equation and just look at the facts that you have in front of you with this animal and be, okay, this is going wrong, this is going wrong, this is going wrong, here's what we can do and here's what we can't do. What is this animal's quality of life going to be moving forward? Um, so that's definitely the hardest decision for us to have to do here. You know, if we get an animal with, you know, compound fractures because it was hit by a car, um, they come in in pieces. It's just, it's very, very tough to see sometimes. Um, you see all the good with all the bad. Um, so you've got to be ready for that. Um, our volunteers aren't necessarily always involved with things like that. We do have some volunteers who work our front desk and see all of the things that come in. But some of our volunteers are, you know, much happier in the back helping with laundry and dishes and the baby birds. So they're not seeing all of that coming in. But if you're ever going to get into this field and become a rehabber, just know that those things will happen. Um, it's just part of the job and it's something, it's not the easy, it's the hardest part of the job, um, but some days you'll have, you know, all releases and animals that come in that you can help all day and other days that you're going to have all animals that come in that aren't going to make it. And it's, it's, it's a balance that you just have to kind of get used to, unfortunately. Yep. And um, I'm really glad that we were able to talk about this because again, this is a field that is vital to the health of the environment mm -hmm. and it's going to be saving things but it's not an easy one it is rewarding it is important it is challenging and I think that there are some of my viewers out there I know that you guys have already mentioned this and I know that this is where it's in your heart and I think you guys absolutely can do this um, but if there are some people who are looking into this career field um, it it's definitely going to be something where I would recommend volunteering like she said to um, you really want to make sure that you can see it and it's something where um it's okay if if it's not for you it is yes. absolutely okay don't force yourself to do it oh, exactly <laughs> we always stress you know if something isn't right for you let's find a different avenue that you can help our facility with you know if you're more into social media or helping in our office that's fine too um or if just the whole facility isn't right for you i will help my volunteers find another facility that is more suited to what their interests are um, but back to what you were saying about, you know, these animals helping the envi their environments, you know, animals might come in sick with a disease that we've never seen before or a disease that we know is highly contagious to others in their population. That's another time that we might have to make one of those difficult decisions because we don't want to contaminate the rest of the population if we were to put that animal back out. 
Um, so yeah, it, it can be tough sometimes. We do try to find homes for animals if we can. If it's an injury that, you know, maybe a zoo can take that animal or another rehab facility that has an ambassador program. Um, I mentioned our ambassadors, we have 10 animal ambassadors. So they're all animals with some type of injury that prohibits them from being released back into the wild. So whether that's a foot, a wing injury, um, some animals have a mental injury where they imprint it on people. So they're perfectly fine otherwise, but they just love people and land on people and don't know how to hunt for food. Um, so sometimes we will do that as well. We'll, we'll try to find homes for certain animals. Yes. So that brings up a really good point. Cause this is where I think a lot of people have already heard of wildlife rehabbers is probably through their local zoos um, because a lot of times they do get animals in that have not been able to be uh, released. So this is this is why we end up having that partnership guys and why we do end up working with our, our locals because a lot of times people will bring animals to the zoo because again they assume that we can just fix everything. Of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, I have never worked with with reptiles guys. If you guys were to bring me a local chakwala I would not be able to go and give that animal the best care that it would need so it's it's always best to go and make sure that they are going to um a rehabilitation but like she said there's sometimes where an animal can't be released and let's point this out um there's probably very specific guidelines of what you need to follow for whether an animal can be released or not like is there like yeah, yeah it's in the you know all the rehab training that they get um any rehab or training will clearly state what can and cannot be released so Unlike us, when we break our arms or our wrists, we can put metal plates and pins in our wrists and our arms to help heal things, but we actually can't do that with animals and then release them into the wild. Because say, you know, we do that to a squirrel and then something tries to eat the squirrel. We don't want them then eating the metal pins and plates. Um, so we do have to be very, very cautious about what we can and really can and can't do back and put back into the wild. We want to make sure that we're, we are releasing healthy, viable individuals back into the populations. That is a really, really good point. Um, I, I never even thought of that. So yeah, it's it's one of those things where you're helping the individual, but you have to see the long term. You have to mm -hmm. see those ripple effects. Yeah. And metal going into the digestive tract of something probably is not a good idea. No, no, I don't think the, the hawk or the eagle would be really happy about that one. <laughs> and then you'd get another rehab. And then get another patient. Yeah, exactly. We, we'd rather not see that cyclical effect. We'd rather just be one and done and not have anything else come in because of it. That's a really, really good point. So yeah, there is so much thought and so much um, I don't want to say rules because it makes it sound really strict, but it's really important. So there's a lot of regulation, but yeah, in a way there are a lot of rules because mm -hmm. it has to be for the benefit of everyone. It has mm -hmm. to be for the best. And I think that's a really, really good point. So um, this has been a really good, I hope, understanding. I hope people appreciate what you guys do a lot more because again, I, so. I think, <laughs> I, I hope that they, they um, realize that this is, this is vital. Um, guys, if you don't have a local rehabber uh, near you, um, maybe this is something where it's time to fill a need, um, but realize that you're probably going to have to travel so that you can go and apprentice under them first, because that is very important. But, um, you know, the more that people want to get out and want to help this, I, I hope that we end up following through uh, and really supporting this. And guys, I'm going to be the first one out there. Um, if you guys do have a local rehabber, they're probably needing support too. Um, you can't treat animals for free a lot of the times. No, nope. and yeah. rehabilitation, we actually, we cannot legally charge for a patient to come into us. So we, we're not like a normal vet's office where you take your cat or dog and you pay to have them looked at or you pay to have their shots updated or anything like that. We don't charge anybody. So when they come into us, we take care of that animal for free to the people who bring it to us. Yes. But it's not um, free to take care. <laughs> it is not free to take care of. I can I can promise you that those animals are not getting better on hopes and dreams. No, um, no. <laughs> So this is another good way if you guys are able to go and reach out to your local wildlife rehabbers, ask them what they need. Um, I know money is tight for a lot of us right now, but maybe there's blankets, maybe there's towels, maybe it is with volunteer time, maybe it's um, do they need extra produce or something that you can go and help contribute to. So little things like that will make a huge difference because um, I know that these guys are also having a pretty tough time with everything going on right now. They are seeing increased patients, they're probably seeing decreases in a lot of other things and there's going to be some ripple effects coming down the line so um i really want to make sure that if you guys have the opportunity to just give a huge shout out to your to your rehabbers near you uh, i'm sure they would appreciate that too 
check their Facebook pages if they have them. A lot of times I know for our facility, we post things all the time. We usually put out one to two posts a day. A lot of times about animals, which is really beneficial, but other times when we have certain needs. Um, we just put one out the other day saying we needed paper towels, Lysol wipes, disinfecting, hand sanitizer, um, Pedialyte, so all sorts of things. Yeah, should have definitely reach out to them and see what they might need. That's a really, really good point. So I hope you guys have learned a lot. Chelsea, my mind is blown. Um, I think that this is a really great opportunity for people to start seeing that it's not just one little, one little tract here. People can do a lot to go and work with animals in the world. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me, it was exciting. Yes, um, and again guys, uh, like always, we're gonna stay in touch. If you have questions, drop them in the comments, reach out to us. And if you think that this is something where you might want to pursue, we're gonna be in touch and I'm happy to go and get you the information that you need or send you to somebody who would know. I wanna make sure that um, if this is something that you do wanna pursue, awesome. I will give you whatever you need to make that happen. That is always my promise to all of my viewers out there. I will move heaven and earth to make sure that you guys um, are understanding how to do that. So I'm happy to go and um, make sure you are in contact with Chelsea if you're near there or even our rehabbers out here. Um, that is the one thing about our community that I do love. If I put the call out, people are always willing to go and answer that for me. Um, so I am always happy to go and share that. So I please, 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 if you think that you want to do this, absolutely reach out to us and we're going to be able to go and make that happen. Uh, this has been great. Thank you, Chelsea. I've had a blast. Uh, what do you think, guys? I think that this has been an amazing interview, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again next week for more. Always keep checking back. You'll see our Animal Career Day interviews every Tuesday, and um, yeah, if there's a career field that you are interested in, ask, and I'm sure that we will be able to go and find more information about that. As always, keep sharing the love. Keep sharing us. We always love ha having you guys come and support us, and uh, what's the name of your facility, Chelsea? So I am at the Florida Wildlife Hospital. Go ahead, find them on Facebook. I will go and put a link on here as well. Um, give them a like, give them a share, give them a shout out, show some love to Chelsea and her crew. And if you guys are from Florida, because I know some of you are around there, go ahead, check them out. See if there's ways that you can help around there. And that's a really good way as well. And until next time, bye everyone. Bye guys.